So here we are, lesson 14C. In the next preview assignment and in the next class, you will need to clear, identify elements of a research design that may introduce bias, suggest cor corrections to a research design that can minimize bias, and identify appropriate conclusions in an observational study. That's a lot. So let's start with a good study design. A good research study has many characteristics, but we know that it starts with asking a really, really, really good question. Then there may be a hypothesis followed by a study that tries to answer the original question, and the researcher must have good documentation and present and interpret the results. Question number one, another quick reminder, if you haven't already hit pause and worked on these by yourself, you should go ahead and hit pause, at least work on all the parts of question one, and then come back and let's look at it together. In 2014, CBS News teamed up with the New York Times to poll 500 people in the United States of America. And one question asked was, now thinking about your telephone use, is there at least one telephone inside your home that really is currently working and is not a cell phone? Results of the survey showed that 222 people said they do have a phone in the home telephone, while 278 said they did not have a home telephone. So starting with part A, what is the population of the study? And the population needs to be pretty descriptive, and it would be not just 500 people, but all people in the United States of America. Part B, what percentage of the people surveyed had a landline telephone at home? And round the percentage to the nearest tenth. So we want the percentage of the people who are surveyed who had a landline. So the number of people who had a landline were 222 people out of the 500 who were surveyed. So as I grab a calculator and then punch 222 divided by 500, since they're asking for a percentage, I will multiply times 100 and then it says round to the nearest tenth. So we are looking at the people who have a phones in their homes as 44 and 4 tenths percent. I want to go ahead and answer part C while we're here. Part C says what percentage of the people surveyed did not have a landline telephone at home and round that percentage to the nearest tenth. At this point we could take the other part, part from 100 percent, but if we haven't double checked to make that we truly have a sum of 500, then let's go ahead, take our people who do not have a landline, divide the 278, the 278 divide by 500, and when we multiply by 100, we get 56, glory, 55 and 6 tenths percent. I'm going to go ahead and add that to our 44 and 4 tenths percent that we got and we're at 100 percent. Question D says, what questions do you think that the researchers at CBS News and the New York Times were trying to answer? It, it appears, maybe many things, but one thing it does that does appear is they were asking what percentage of the people in the United States have a landline phone at home? Part E, suppose that we ask this question again in the year 2040. Do you think that the answers will be the same? Why or why not? And it could be, probably, that these answers will not be the same. If the current trend continues, then probably fewer people are going to have landline phones at home in the future. So this is a really great time for you to hit pause and go work on questions two and three, at least question two, and then come back and let's look at these together. 
So looking at question two, it says, suppose you saw this question on a survey. From 2012 to 2014, on average, 1,297 children die annually from gun-related injuries in the United States, according to a study published in the American Academy of Pediatrics. Do you think we need more gun control in the United States? Part A. Do you think the person who wrote the question was trying to lead the responder to answer a certain way? And the answer is definitely. They were trying to make an appeal to the emotions so that someone polled would be more likely to answer that gun control is needed. Part B, suppose we reworded the question. The Second Amendment of the United States Constitution says, a well-regulated militia being necessary to the security of a free state, the right of the people to keep and bear arms shall not be infringed. Do you think we need more gun control in the United States? Do you think the person who wrote this question was trying to lead the responder to answer in a certain way and then explain? Well, yes, and that needs, there you go, yes. The researcher was trying to make an appeal to patriotism so that someone polled would be more likely to answer that more gun control is, is not needed. And I think it needs to be that more gun control is needed to keep the well-regulated militia. Either way, it does sound like there was an appeal to emotion. In our worksheet 9D, you saw that correlation between two variables does not necessarily imply that one causes the other. Sometimes correlation is a coincidence. On the other hand, if causation is possible, correlation warrants further study. For each of the following, determine whether or not further study is warranted. Part A. A 1999 study at the University of Pennsylvania Medical Center found that infants and children who slept with a bedroom light on were more likely to develop myopia, myopia, excuse me, nearsightedness later in life and would need to wear glasses. Do you think this warrants further study? And it might because exposure to light could possibly impact your vision. A little bit more detail on this one. The study claimed that there was causation and many people became worried about and removed the night lights from their children's rooms. But then later, another study showed that the light itself did not cause myopia. myopia. It was more likely than the parents who had it and the vision difficulties. And they put the lights in their children's rooms so that they could see better and that they would not stumble. The children ended up with myopia later in life because of heredity. There was causation, but it was not related to the light. Part B. In, 19, in 2015, the standardized test scores of school children dropped in New Jersey. The number of issued New Jersey teaching certificates dropped 17% from 2009 to 2017. Do you think this warrants further investigation or further study? And it might, since there are fewer teaching certificates, it could indicate fewer teachers and hence an increase in the class size, which itself could warrant poor, poor performance. But it did turn out that the reason that the standardized test scores dropped was because of the implementation of a new standardized testing system related to the core curriculum and not because there were fewer teachers. Part C, again, if you have not already looked at this and made your decision, you need to go look at Part C and then come back. In the Middle Ages, Europeans believed that lice were a sign of good health because nearly everyone had lice Yet lice were not observed on people with fevers because, or not because, people would wear animal furs in the hopes that lice 
would jump off of the furs and onto their own hair to keep them healthy. Do you think this warrants further study? Because it was coincidental. Lice do not cause good health. We'll go on to part D on this one. This is our final part of our final question. And it's stating that the number of penguins at a local zoo has steadily increased over the years. At the same zoo, the number of lemurs, lemur, it has also steadily increased over the years. Does this warrant further study? This actually does not warrant further study as the number of penguins does not likely have a causal relationship with the number of lemurs. However, there are some interesting discussions that could come from this kind of scenario. Clearly, the penguins do not affect the number of lemurs in a zoo. Lemurs? Lemurs. However, this may not be a complete coincidence. The zoo could be expanding, and perhaps the zoo was given a donation of additional land. The zoo may also be feeding their animals better food. It's going to help them to live longer, encourage reproduction. And in these explanations, we see a common cause. That's something that's happening that's not part of the observation, but it's causing what's going on in both variables. And up until now, we've only talked about correlation as being coincidental or a possible causation. In the scenario that we see in Part D, there really is a third possibility, the common cause. And this is going to be worth thinking on, looking at, as much as you want to right now, but you do need to look at your syllabus. And if your syllabus says there is more to do this week, you need to do it. And if not, we'll see you next week.